What's up, everyone? Alyssa's doing some <laughs> selfies here. Welcome to Shocker. the Welcome to, to the podcast. Um, today's episode is sponsored by CBD for Life. We've been using these products now for a couple of weeks. Yes, maybe even a month. I have to get more of that rub. All it's... of them are great, but I still think with all great products, there's always a favorite, uh-huh. and it's that little container. And you're almost out of it. I know, because I've been using it. What's that one specifically? Uh, That is the CBD for Life uh, Rub Lemongrass. Okay. And it, for some reason, because if you're at home and you're getting ready to put it on like that all day long, I'll wear it if I'm here and I'm working or if we're um, about to go to bed, I just, you just take it out and you put it on and it gets rid of that pain. I know. That's the the really good one. Yeah. If, um, if you've, if you've heard us talk about CBD for life, um, on one of the podcasts and you haven't given it a try yet, I'd recommend trying a few products that would work best for you, but that's become our favorite. If we had to pick a favorite, I hope we're allowed to do that as a sponsored video, pick a favorite, but we're talking about their company. (laughs) I love all their stuff. The lavender roll is really good. It is, but But I'm still, the lemongrass is my favorite. Oh my God. It's yeah. Amazing. And and if you're new and you haven't heard anything um, about this, it's um, it's a CBD rub mm-hmm. and there's no THC detected. So you don't have to worry about getting stoned or anything. <laughs> uh, it's third uh, party tested for potency. It's a female run company. Yep. Um, and there's no parabens and yep. you'll, you'll love the site, but it's CBD for life. And the, and the four is F O R. So it's CBD for life dot US. Correct. And they even gave us a code for you to save 20%, yeah. which is Freddie Alyssa 20 at checkout. And get yourself some of that rub. Get some of that rub. Get some of that it's rub. It's so good. <laughs> it's so, so good. Yeah, it's um, it's been really great. I'm always down to just try new things. And, you know, we it's interesting. We tried that meal. Um, the meal pr- or that they deliver meal delivery. And you yeah, it up from but I went and picked it up, which I thought was great. CrossFit. I guess I don't think it was anything against the the company. This is not sponsored. Uh, this portion, um, <laughs> but uh, we, we yeah we weren't partnered with the company we use. We just saw a Facebook ad of meal prepping, right? And um, I didn't know which one to choose. And you know me, I'm very impatient. I'm impulsive with certain things. Bigger decisions. Shocker. Bigger decisions. I've been better with lately. Yes. Um, but the uh, little things, I still am impulsive. It was good. I just, it just. For... Well, let, let's backtrack a minute. When you made this decision, you, I think you saw an ad on Instagram, mm-hmm. right? And you went and you looked, and then you picked all these meals without, or you let them pick the meals without consulting me. And if I'm going to get a meal prep delivery, don't you want meals that like you think are going to be delicious? But I wanted variety because yeah. I, when I'm on a strict diet, I eat the same foods and I go, what if I can get something new and I'm going to try new things? I'm going to be innovative. And I just put no no seafood, no but coconut, I no like avocado. Seafood. I love but I didn't want to go through and pick all the meals. I was like, let me just try this. Why did you do no seafood or no avocado? Because it's not my it's not my cup of tea. It's not your cup of tea, it's or do you think you're allergic? I'm not allergic. I, I actually had Okay, side note. See now we're getting all sidetracked. Okay. We were at Hugo's restaurant. <laughs> yes, we and were. And Hugo's, how would you describe Hugo's? Um, really delicious, natural, vegan friendly. You know, they have... It's not a strict vegan restaurant or vegetarian. They have vegan, um, vegetarian, and organic options. So it's like a... It's definitely like a healthier place. very LA. And one of the things they always ask you is, um, you know, do you have any allergies? (laughs) It's literally what the... Is there anything we need to know about allergies? They always ask. Yes. And this one time we were there, it was like five o'clock, no one was Mm. there. And this gentleman came up, great energy. Like yeah. A plus. Yeah. And we were like kind of shooting the S with him. And uh, and he, I was like, I want these these tacos. <laughs> and I said, no avocado. Well, and we made a whole joke with him. I go, he swears he's allergic because they literally asked Yeah, we you. made the joke. Yeah. And, and he's like, okay, no worries. No avocado. Well. So I, I, we get it. comes it, out. But it was on the bottom of the tortilla. <laughs> so it was smeared. And then there was all the toppings. So I was eating it. And I go, this tastes different. You ate like almost the whole taco. I ate, I then... ate a taco and a half before I realized, is this avocado? And he comes up and he goes, oh my God, I'm so sorry. And I was like, no worries. And I and I was like, well, this is perfect because yeah. I've never touched avocado since I thought I almost died 11 years ago on it. And so I was like, this is the moment. There was an urgent care diagonally across the street. I go, I'm in good shape. Let me just see if it's anxiety. You're Nothing fine. happened. Nothing happened. So I'm still scared of it, but I know I'm not allergic. But I was like, oh, at least maybe we'll get some free tacos. They never took anything off the no, bill. No, he just goes, oh, I'm sorry. What if that would have actually <laughs> killed me? And they'll say, well, you, know what, you know what they'd say? We're so sorry. You get 20% off next time. 
You know, I think the last time we were there, there was someone sitting next to us, and he had a freak out on the waiter because I think they brought something that had like nuts in it, and I think he was allergic to that, and yeah. so he made a scene. I, I understandably so, but they also ask you every time, "Do you have any diet restrictions or anything you're allergic to?" They ask you that. If it, ordinary restaurants don't. No. So you're kind of like whatever, but because they always make yeah. it a thing, it's even worse if it doesn't it's doesn't horrible. happen. Um, but back to the whole uh, delivery thing, I think it's a great idea. Um, yeah. But for me, I just felt like even meal prepping, like when we did it, if you make grilled chicken, even with great sauce and it's whatever, after two days of a grilled chicken sitting in the refrigerator mm-hmm. and then you heat it in the microwave, how good can it be? No. And I was just like, you know what? So and. So it we, was okay. We just didn't love it. Yeah. You know, like it was fine. So I wasn't going to go and like pick it up and our call box is working again. So we could have had it delivered. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I, I would much rather go and get a 600 calorie meal. Um, like we get a pizza rev or subway or we'll make food at home sometimes. Do you remember on New Year's Eve when our call box wasn't working and we ordered in dinner? We were Because we ended up like vegging out at home. We watched the morning yeah. show and we ordered from this place called Stanley's and I haven't had it in like seven years. And all I wanted was the Amy's grapefruit salad. It's got like shredded chicken, grapefruit, um, some nuts. It's delicious. Avocado too. And we were just waiting for it to come. And then all of a sudden on our app, on our phone, we see, oh, they left. And it's because... The call box wasn't working. And they couldn't get a hold of you because it was on your old My phone old number. My old cell phone. And so we missed out. And then we go back to Postmates to try and like reorder it. And, and they closed, <laughs> right? closed. <laughs> so yeah. we didn't. And that was like the last that. day of eating like. Whatever we wanted. Whatever we wanted yeah. to. So that was a bummer. But it was a good way to start off the new year. I, um. Woke up feeling thin today. Yeah. I think it was my, my haircut and everything. So totally, I was like, I'm feeling totally. good. So I was like, I, I I wanted to wait a month. But then my first week, I literally gained 0.1 pounds. I'm like, what the hell? But now here I am six days later, and I'm down 3.2 pounds. Yay. So, um, but with what I have scheduled of my plan is that, what is all on our table? I don't know. It can't be from the ceiling. But you just what cleaned this? this yesterday for that video. Who knows? What is that? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what that could be. Um, Anywho. But uh, what was I saying? Oh, um, yeah, the weight loss thing. Weight loss. As long as I lose two pounds a week, eight pounds a month, that's my goal. That's my so as long as on February I'm eight pounds less than I was um, on the first, then I'm on track. And uh, so I'm slowly going to you know, build into that. Um, but so far it looks like I'm right on track. I'm just a little behind, but I think now that my body's used to it and I'm also, instead of doing complete calorie restriction, I'm earning it by burning the calories rather than restricting the calories. And I've heard people say too, where they're like, you know, why would someone go spend an hour in the gym on a treadmill to burn 600 calories just so they could eat more food? It's like, I think it was you who said that. (laughs) <laughs> no, I heard it from someone who's like a fitness guru where they're just like, just have self-discipline. It's like, no, I would rather go spend an hour because it makes me feel happy. Oh, you're saying I you burn calories and then I can go eat an extra 600 on top of my allotted calorie. Different strokes for different folks, you know? Yeah. But so it's just I, I finding. I think it's nice though because we've been getting outside every day and just being in mother nature and enjoying the sunshine you feel so good it is perfect it's, yeah it's really nice and as the conversation of days coming back gets closer and closer um i'm so excited to like enjoy the time off because even though we don't work very often mm-hmm. there's still something cool about having no like schedule upon somebody else's request like that's such a, a gift, right? You know what I mean? Because even though I love what I do, I still I'm like there's days that I'm like, oh, I hope my call time's at noon because we were like up late and then it's at seven. You're like, oh, I'm only gonna get like five hours sleep tonight, right? Um, so I'm just like every day being like, all right, I gotta enjoy every day that I can do whatever the hell I want until I get back to my rigid schedule. And then with our upload plans of putting out so much content here on YouTube. Um, it's going to be really packed to get our workout in, to work on days, to take the photos, to do the blog, and to put up a video every single day. It's yep. going to be a packed schedule, but I'm ready for that in 2020. Heck yeah. Like I want, we will control and make 2020 a year that that stands out in our minds. Absolutely. I'm really excited for tomorrow too because we're going to go stop by 
one of the agencies I work with for uh, partnerships. The house. They have this sick house that they got. It's one of their, I guess they're calling it their one of their West Coast studios. And they got a house and all, all of the talent can go and shoot there with different partnerships and collabs. So we're going to go check it out tomorrow. We should vlog it. Yeah, Wouldn't we could do fun? that. Show a little behind the scenes. Yeah. Yeah, because I, th- I think we can get away with doing one vlog a week. Um, like even how we tried the uh, behind the scenes of the podcast studio, it just shows how, you know, that really takes more planning. Like we yeah. have systematically made this convenient as hell. Everything's set up. You turn on the cameras. <laughs> you just hope that the uh, angle's good. Um, but I think I'm good today. Um, and then you yell at me sometimes. <laughs> you go, babe, the angle wasn't good. Well, the beautiful thing is it can always be fixed in post, but as soon as you zoom in or zoom out, it then takes the length of that clip and rendering. So if it's an hour and 20 minute podcast, if the angle and I have to zoom it in on post, it's an hour and 20 minutes for it to render. So we lose an hour and 20 minutes in the edit. So the <laughs> shots have to be perfect. Not um, my forte, what can I say? But uh, But the vlog, it just shows us that that is what's going to take extra planning, extra time. Yeah. But I want us to be able to stay really excited creatively. Yeah. Because if we were to sit down and just talk, which I'd love to do, but I think for the audience and I think for us, mm-hmm. doing it twice a week in full length is perfect. Yeah. And then we can put out the clips of the episode um, and uh, on different days, like highlight clips. Yeah. And then make a couple one-off videos creatively that we'll have fun and it'll also be entertaining for the audience to see us not just in this room all the time but out and about love it um but it's interesting how they're doing this house because um depending on where you live i don't know if this is just a west coast thing or in big cities but there's there's a company called WeWork, and it's actually huge it's blowing up where essentially there's someone who buys a building WeWork, and people can rent out individual um, office space mm-hmm. and then in the in the lobby or in the courtyard if you will there's also a bunch of tables where people can go for even cheaper but it gets creative maybe self-employed or work from home folks out of the house yep. if they're not motivated in the house to go here work with other self-starters and creators and have that environment yep. and then when I got my hair cut yesterday um, we used an app yeah. And uh, this gentleman um, came over to the house, was amazing, so nice. So nice. I appreciate good people yeah. so, so much. Um, and he works in a place, and he described it, it's like WeWork, where yeah. there's someone who does infrared sauna, him and his fiance cut hair, um, there's a Botox place, yeah. there's, so it seems like in today's world, because rent's going through the roof, yeah. and it's hard to maintain that overhead, that businesses are coming together yep. and sharing um the roof but they're also well i got my hair cut maybe i'll go get a little botox yeah. maybe i'll go into the sauna so it self-promotes it's beautiful and my whole rant is leading up to this house that i love the idea of this house because we as one of our we might venture out and do this in the future i've always had this dream of creating some sort of big warehouse and casey nastat did it was going to do it and then kind of dipped. I don't know why, mm-hmm. but imagine having a location where there's like six podcast studios. There's all these backdrops for photos. There's like all these different stations for gaming. And you basically have a place where all creators, not all, you'd obviously have to figure out a way to get people that you like and who are kind and nice and share the same vision. But imagine the people you would meet if there were six successful podcasts being shot there simultaneously. People are going to meet videographers. They're going to meet guests. They're going to be like, well, while you're here, do you want to pop over to the Fred and Alyssa show and be on that mm-hmm. or vice versa? Then people are taking pictures in the lobby. Photographers are there getting their word out. So it's a place. It's a building. But it would cost a fortune. <laughs> but you'd have to figure out a way to charge and to have yeah. it fair just like we work. But that's kind of what this house is, I feel, where it's allowing people who work under this umbrella of this agency to all meet each other, to collab, to help yeah. build the brand. Because the bigger your brand gets, the bigger their, company. their paycheck's going to yeah, be well, on yeah, brand deals. Too. So it all makes, makes sense. sense. So I'm excited to see it. And I'm glad that it ain't my thing. And I can just be the camera guy tomorrow. The camera guy. Oh, I love that. I know you do. I don't have to be on. I can just, can just... shoot the camera and... Uh, but, but it's really cool too because at this house, I feel like a lot of times you would have to pay to use the space, but you don't here if you're partnering and working with them. 
because they yeah. want you to get the best photos, content, and photos possible. And when we were looking at pictures, I was like, "This is really nice." Oh, it's a beautiful home. It's really, really. I'm excited to see it in person. And, and the aesthetic does matter. There's such an ebb and flow of um, when starting off as an influencer. Like we'll look at uh, even your Instagram. There is a distinct moment. I remember the photo. Uh-huh. It was the one with the dress in the wind. Uh-huh. In, in, in Mexico? Yeah, where was that? Playa del Carmen. That's right. Um, where we finally figured out what an aesthetic on an Instagram page is. Not we figured it out because I had been trying for a year and a half prior. But, but what was wrong with those photos then? Because I was using apps, not Lightroom, which is a desktop actual application. So I was trying to use apps and I was like, I, you could see if you look at the photos, if you go back before that dress Two photo, years ago. I was trying really hard to find that look and that vibe, but I didn't quite figure it out yet. And then I learned Lightroom. I understood like the specific aesthetic I wanted. I just didn't know how to get it for so long. And I would always Google all the time. I was like, how did these people do it? And then you just start learning and you figure out what works best for you. And that was that. You should make a one-off video to help people. Because you'll see people who are trying to become influencers on, on – because uh, um, it, it depends. Like like mine is a, is a mess on Instagram, but, but I'm not building an aesthetic. Yeah. For people who are actually trying to do brand deals and build an aesthetic, and basically what that means, you can you can I, if you're on Instagram, you'll you'll understand there are, there are certain women and men that when you click on their page, there's a brand. You know what you're gonna get? Color a quality or of photo, something. A color. It's their vibe. It's their energy. It's ultimately the brand. You yeah. know. And I feel like with guys, it's a little bit different because like even your grid. I think it looks great because it's a representation of you and you aren't all about beautiful, pretty photos and having a look. Yours is very you. You've got your podcast, you know, you sharing things that are going on in your life. Like yours reminds me a little bit of Gary V's. It's just like what's happening in your life. Mine is more based and focused on a look because I love fashion. I love lifestyle. I like pretty things and, and the aesthetic of the yeah. way something looks. And, and, and what that basically means, too, is the color scheme. Yeah. When you put filters, you, you want to have um, that aesthetic that when you look at the grid itself, and that's why people come to you so often because they want their brand associated with someone who understands because there's a lot of people, and I always love when people give things a try. It's like learn, yeah. but we also didn't know. We had no one help us. We just looked at things. We compared. We go, why is this person making this much money? Well, yeah. all these people's pages look yeah. like this. The people who aren't making money, their page looks like this. Yeah. Let's copy this and make it our own. And it's also what goes on in the photo. Like some people's backgrounds, even on big influencers that I still just go, you get so upset when why people is there in front of a, a, wall. Dumpster a dumpster in the background? Why is the angle in you're in some weird apartment building in the background? Like go out where it's beautiful, but don't do too much greenery. Because then it looks like it's an average, like no offense anyone, but like an average wedding photo shoot or like we're pregnant photo shoot where people, where photographers like go stand next to that tree. No, don't (laughs) go stand next to the tree. You people want today in today's world to to see a photo that almost doesn't look planned. Mm -hmm. Like anytime we do things, transparent. You're always just like having fun and spontaneous, and I don't just. Go, all right, ready, and You're click. You're always clicking. You can see when someone goes, okay, ready, click. Or someone sees on Instagram where it's a girl walking, and you can see that they've faked walking yeah. and took a picture. Yeah. How about you just walk, and I'll take 20 pictures in 10 seconds of you walking, and one of those photos yeah, will nail it. And Or with the hair in the wind or a smile. You can see when people try to do the look yeah. rather than just living, yeah. and I snap, 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 snap. And then you get that there one photo that one. living in the moment and you don't want it to look like I love those shots where we're in the middle of the street where we're just like, uh-huh. it's so busy. You're no like, one's go, here. Go. go there. And as you're running, the wind's blowing. I'm taking them and you're in the middle of the street in Los yeah. Angeles. People are like, wait, how in the hell are there no cars? And it's a cool moment. Yeah. So anyone who's influencing, like good job on working. We started there too. But if you asked for advice, here it is. Um, <laughs> live in the moment and take a bunch of photos and then pick one you go through 200 photos to get six good yeah. ones and you hate taking all of them you're always like you got it you got it i'm like take more because <laughs> i know when i look that i want to make sure well because I you're picky it. on your specific look, look I want i'm to look picky on way. the emotion the aesthetic how it looks 
but everything can be perfect. But you're like, yeah, but my eyes are a little squinty. I'm like, oh, but you don't understand, babe. The wind, the the angle, like the space between everything, it is a perfect photo and I'm ready to move on because no one's going to zoom in and go, oh, like she has a speck of lipstick on her Listen, tooth. Listen, I know what I like, babe. People on Instagram scroll like I this. I don't care. Who's zooming I've got in? a brand to protect. <laughs> You know, it's so funny because I feel like everything I do now in life, I'm always thinking, ooh, that's a great shot. And when I was at Disney, um, right after we got engaged and I went with Brooke and uh, her family, they had a big parade going on. And I was like, oh, they're about to close down the, you know, big castle. I was like, this is my moment. This is how I can get a picture. And so everyone started walking and I go, Brooke, I'm so sorry to do this to you. And I go, come with me. And so we ran over and I was like, okay, no one's here. Take my picture quick. And so she was taking a bunch of them and you can see this picture if you look back to that time. But I ended up like getting yelled at because they're like, we have a parade coming, please leave. Oh, yeah, you got to get that. But I needed my shot, you know? Yeah. Because usually there's so many people in the background, so. Yeah. And do you... Got a moment, take it. it. But do you feel, though, too, I still think there's some people who have this, like, um, like a slight, um, you know, stigma of, like, ugh, like influencers, influencers YouTubers. But... I feel it's not as much as it used to be. I think there's just haters because I think some people who maybe aren't happy with their life are like, mm -hmm. like uh, uh, it's like, well, we get to work from home. Yeah. But I also think it's overall, it's not for fun. It's, there's starting to be enough success stories for people to be like, oh, it's an actual valuable, yeah. viable career. Who was that one girl that you said, remember someone asked you, did you, did you always want to be an influencer? Oh, yeah. Who was what that? Was and you that? were like, she was like young. And then you were like, uh, you're like, that. W this wasn't a job when I was a kid. In, until like 2014. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. What was that from? Isn't that crazy, though? Because there are actual kids in high school right now who are like, I want to be an influencer. Well, Gary says one of the, I YouTuber, mean, right now, or... every single person wants to be, not That's every, creator. but a huge a amount them. wants to be a YouTube or whatever TikTok kind of influencer, TikToker. Um, but I think it's also healthy because there are so many kids who are creative that when I grew up in high school, um, creativity, yeah, there was a theater arts class, but if you were a singer, an artist, a painter, a comedian, a magician, mm -hmm. any sort of creativity... There is no path in high school, at least when I was there, that allows you to go spend all your junior and senior year, not with government, not with chemistry, not with calculus, right. not just every day you're working on your craft, you're writing, you're painting. It's not celebrated. So there's a lot of kids yeah. that might feel like they're not smart or they don't fit in. And it's just the system isn't. Too. Well, that's yeah. why people. Yeah. But then that's also like, yet again, I feel you're going to be at a risk of like, it's different. The most safe thing for, I think, most parents and most kids and what society is, just just go get good grades in school and just go to college, even if it's community or public, like, or, 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 or you know, just, just, safe just stay school. there. Like going to a trade school, like, I don't know, or trying acting, I don't know, going to an art school, I don't know, traveling abroad, it's a risk. And it's like, none of it really matters. Yeah. You can always go yeah, and do something i could go to school yeah. right now and say forget all this i'm going to be a doctor mm -hmm. and what's it take 12 years i believe so yeah. so by 44 years old i could be a doctor and be a doctor for the next 50 years of my life who cares you'd be mcdreamy <laughs> mcdreamy <laughs> do you think that they have social media classes in high school now do you think it's evolved to that yet I don't know. I know they have courses and stuff but, in but, college. But, 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 <laughs> but, 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 well, um, but, yet again, it's, it's very difficult because I remember back when we were full-time network marketing for all those years, there were some people who were like, it's taught in college um, and it's like, hmm. it's like, okay, but are you successful in the industry? It's hard to learn about being a real estate agent for someone who hasn't sold Oh, I don't know, a hundred homes and is currently still doing right. so. And, or like Tom Cruise could retire, never do another film and has enough cred that he could be an acting teacher for the rest of his life. Right. I'm always weary of people and, and out, especially out here, it's like those who can't do teach. It's like, but why 
you you never became a successful actor. Mm-hmm. How the hell are you teaching acting? Yeah. You're, you're, I hate when people teach on other people's experiences. Mm-hmm. There are so many things, babe, you know my list, that I cannot wait to talk about. I know uh-huh. it. But until I can put it in my own life and add my experience to something else I learned, I feel like a fraud talking about it. Yep. Until I, I know everything about getting out of debt or I know everything about real estate investing, but I've never invested in real estate property. So though I could talk about it, though I can mm-hmm. make a video, though I know what to do, because I haven't invested my own money, got in there firsthand, I feel like an imposter making a how to invest in real estate video if I've never successfully pulled income myself from doing it. But that's why I love what Harvard did because they brought the Instagram influencer, the fat Jewish, to do an entire um, speech on social media. He's had yeah. so much success. And he wore assless chaps. Yeah, <laughs> you guys should look this guy up. Look up the fat Jewish. On Instagram. And by the way, he sold his rosé babe to Guinness? I think so. It's that huge Guinness book. No, it's not Guinness. He sold it for like tens of millions of dollars. And he built all of this by being funny and wild. And here's my thing I always want to reiterate. Because some people will write comments about this. I'm not attacking the traditional. I just want to be a voice for people like us or who your kids or nephew or some students, probably, I don't know, 35% of them aren't, don't have this avenue. So I'm not poo-pooing on traditional anything. That is great for so many people, but there's not enough people out here talking that if you feel lost or you feel, I didn't know what I wanted to do. I didn't know it was acting, but I just knew that the system I was in wasn't working and I didn't know what to do. And I didn't have the internet back then to have mentors and people to look up to to go, you know what, mom and dad, I'm going to be like this person. So I want to be the voice. So I just always want to make that clear. Anytime we talk crap, it's not that I don't think school works or college works. It just works for some. And right. the narrative is that it should work for all. And that's wrong. Right. So I want to be the voice for people who want to be creative, where social media should be taught, mm-hmm. where different avenues should be taught and it should be celebrated because you don't have to have a college degree. And the statistics show that. But luckily, too, we do have the internet. Kids do have the internet now. Because even this morning, you were watching Impact Theory with Les Brown. And there were some really great nuggets that he said that hit home for both of us. Just, yes. you know, and, and you, you wouldn't have been able to hear that prior. We could have read it, which is another great form of consuming, you know, information. But it just, you, you feel like you're not alone. You've got your own mentor there, even if it is digitally. And that's huge. Yeah, because you could have asked the question. Mm-hmm. Hey, like if I sat down with Les Brown, I was like, hey, what are three tips? He said that in the video. Yep. Why do I have to be there? I actually have all these online mentors that I pick and choose. I also don't conform. Yeah. There are so many people who then become obsessed and go, I need to be Gary V. Right. I enjoy what Gary V is doing and saying, but just because Gary V likes football, baseball cards, sneakers, garage sailing, and build like an agency like none of those five things are interesting to me yeah but the message that he talks about about the attention of a consumer putting the customer and your audience first Mm -hmm. being able to build a brand staying consistent being kind and patient having empathy like all of that resonates with me so i take that yeah uncle dave ramsey when he talks about debt it helps me understand from his point of view but then i got uncle grant who's like you gotta get that money you gotta get that money (laughs) So Uncle Dave is like, don't bring on debt. Grant's like, get that debt, buy those properties. Yeah. And then you have Cousin Graham, who's kind of a mix of both. And so I, I take pieces from everyone. So you don't have to become obsessed with one person and try to be them. I watch about 15 people and I take the best things that relate to me. Yeah. And that's what you need to do. Les Brown was talking about that. For anyone who's feeling lost or unmotivated, you are probably in a situation where people aren't striving to be better. Yeah. You need to read books, listen to podcasts, watch videos every single day to be positive, optimistic, and program yourself to be unique. And that's what he was saying. Don't just let society tell you what you need to be. You need to find out who you are. Don't be a copy of somebody. There's so yeah. many copies in this world. Yeah. And and it's like I'm I'm glad you're supporting your family. I'm glad that you're contributing to society. But there's just so many people that are just copies of each other when we were all born with one unique not one, many unique things, but we can be individual. Yeah. We can be 
What makes you special? What makes you Lean stand out? That. Everyone yeah. was has a gift of life, yep. and you can be unique and stand out. You don't have to be a podcaster or a painter or a singer or a plumber or a teacher. What is unique? What do you do better than anyone, and what yep. do you love more than anybody? That's what you need to be focusing on. Yep. Let these restraints go. That's why I'm not panicked. So many people will be like, like even for us, we don't have a house yet. Like thinking of this back when our parents were 30, if they knew that they were going to have a 32 and 30, how old am I? You're 31. So I'm going to be 32. You're going to be 33. I I just turned 32. No, no it's like you're like close to six months away. You're 32 and a half. Um, that we don't own a home so would be, it is so mind boggling. But times are changing. I'm not stressed about it. Times are changing. And also look where we live. Anyone have a spare cool mill to throw our way? <laughs> oh, that's true too. But I don't know. I'm just saying in general, like times are changing. We don't need to conform to what society says. I think that there are many people that need to follow a path that just feels right to them. If you feel things are right in your life, continue on that path. If things yeah. don't feel 100% great, then start doing some inner, yep. inner dialogue, inner work. Yeah. I love all that. So... I feel we got on some like some inspirational stuff today. What a better segue <laughs> than to s- seamlessly segue into the most inspirational thing that television could produce, <laughs> The Bachelor. The Bachelor, baby. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. So we just watched it last night. Uh, it Ooh. never disappoints. It is so good. I was sad last night was only two hours. Well, it goes by so fast. So fast. I'm like, I need another hour. It's why? Why is it so good? Because people are put in a unrealistic. It is bizarre. When I see him sitting on the couch and there are twelve women, I go, bro. <laughs> like that's probably many men's dream to be able to. But but as you get older Stressful. and you start looking at it, you're just like, dude, you're about to go have a meaningful conversation for ten minutes and then make out with twelve different chicks in an hour and a half like your emotions got to be so messed up and then have to deal with all the chicks emotions so many of them came crying to him last night because of so much so many tears so many tears so entertaining so well okay let's start with hannah brown because in the beginning of the episode she was just having that whole like meltdown and she like got into his lap and wanted to cuddle with him and like you could tell like he obviously very much still has feelings and i was like don't kiss her don't kiss her don't kiss her don't do it and he it didn't he did not yeah yeah it would have been not. a strike against it, him because yeah. it would have been so it was already kind of like effed up that he left the girls on the date you could see that it was yeah. kind of like jesus we're already feeling like crap about trying to be one of 22 here to win your heart which is already strange and mentally draining yeah. now we have to compete against your ex and your i ex-friend. think natasha even said that i'm not going to compete against your I ex love natasha she is awesome she's got like life experience and, and she speaks up like yes. all the other girls on that date were just kind of like uh what do we say to him and she stood up she's like well this is just like messed up and real quick before we move on to that, I got to say too, and like this is just yet again, I'm not coming at this as any other way than I entertainment. Of course. So don't, I'm not like talking crap on people. I'm just saying as, as these characters what the, what who are putting themselves, what they're yeah. presenting and how it's edited. Exactly. But Hannah B, I just didn't like that. It Like it's a red flag. I think he should run from her because she is saying like, I don't know, I'm confused and then she gets on his lap to give him a hug. Like, you're being mean. Like, you're that toying with mean. his emotions yeah. when you know, I could tell by her answers, that she's she doesn't, she doesn't actually love him. She just wants to see out of these 22 women Can because be she lost one? twice. Mm-hmm. Her man that she picked Jed, and then Tyler. Tyler. And now here she is with his her third pick who she doesn't really love. But she wants to see, well, am I better than these 22 women? And it becomes this competition thing. And it's just not it's right. Mean. I that's the Like, move word. on, bro. Yeah. Get rid of the egos. And that's what all these girls have. Mm-hmm. You cannot in four days fall in love with somebody. The reason you're crying is because they pick 22 women who never get told no. I know. And someone has to be second all the way to last place every episode. And it hurts their feelings, not because they're in love with him, but because they're not 
winning. It's a winning and losing yes, competition thing yes, that's making totally them sad. I totally agree. But also, too, on this show, like some other reality shows, they take away all forms of entertainment. You don't have your phone. You don't have magazines. You don't have books. You don't have music. You don't have TV. All you have are these other human beings in the house that you're all talking about Peter. That's it. That is your life. And that's why people get so emotional because they're losing. This is constantly in the forefront of their mind. Like if they got to go listen to music and maybe like check their social media, like they can't do anything. And that's the psychology behind it that's so messed up because they're forced to solely think about this human to human interaction. Like who was Kelsey? Kelsey. <laughs> Kelsey is a meme for life. I'm still hesitant if that whole thing was set up. With the champagne. So if she was in on it, but I was I was but she was crying. Like these aren't actresses. She was crying, but then she goes and, and bumps the well, other okay, champagne okay. off the table. So take it back. What happened is Kelsey brought this bottle of champagne from her hometown and she wanted to set up this great celebration for she and Pete to sit in this romantic setting and pop the champagne bottle. However, Pete was with Hannah Ann, and strategically, you know the producer set this up, but whatever. They sit down, and they open up Kelsey's bottle of champagne. Kelsey finds out. She goes crazy. She calls Hannah Ann a champagne stealer. Yeah. (laughs) Next week's episode, Hannah Ann's crying, I'm not a champagne stealer. (laughs) You can't make this stuff up. It's so good. Oh, my God. And so, anywho... Kelsey goes crazy. She freaks out on Hannah Ann. Pete tries to comfort her. She's like, "Uh uh-uh. Then she finally calms down. Kelsey finally calms down. She goes with Pete to this other area. And this is what you're talking about. She accidentally knocks over another bottle of champagne. Whatever. Not questioning it. Good call, producers. And... (laughs) He opens the bottle and he says to Kelsey. But before this, she was <laughs> sobbing. And then when she got her time, right? she stopped. It's yeah. like when a kid yeah. falls and gets hurt. And then all of a sudden you like make them laugh. and then Or they finally get their way. And then they sit on the couch and they go from tantrum, crying, sadness to, oh, I'm good. Uh-huh. It's 100% what it was. So she was like happy again. And he's like, well, do you want me to pour this into glasses or we just drink right out? And what was her quote? She goes, <laughs> she goes, I'm not a classy bee all the time. That's right. And so she takes this bottle and she swigs it like it's a beer. And it literally goes all over her It face. blows up because of the whatever. Yeah. Not carbonation, is it? Yeah, I think it's champagne's carbonated. But it blows up her nose, up her face. There's already stuff all over it. And it, it was just not her night. It the wasn't poor her night. Girl. Poor girl. Um, and she started like crying again. And it was just a disaster. But yeah, it's quite entertaining, you know, to say the least. Yeah. No, they have a bunch of people. I, I guess it's, yet again, as much as I want to enjoy this, there's, there's still times that I just go, you know, they, they just get the perfect group of people. Because how many people probably audition? 100,000? Oh, my goodness. So and they find the right... Because, like, even um, Sydney, it was so funny when, <laughs> when Natasha was like, you know, if he has feelings for Hannah B, like, go do you. Go explore it. Go explore it. That. And then her response is... Sydney's. But she doesn't, he doesn't know how I feel about him. Like, it's like, like... I need to show him how I can you know be with him but that just shows the youth that shows the age gap between 24 and 31 but that could be flip-flopped maybe like the old soul or life experience or whatever but it's not about you and it's like sydney just has that youthful selfishness and she even had it again later in the episode yeah where that kind of behavior now that i have perspective and i've become such a good listener and communicator and i really pay attention to people that's a red Red flag flag. because if you're selfish in that situation you're going to be selfish in it's other parts like of your later, life, which yeah. are not going to be great. Same thing with Kelsey. For her to be so emotional and be upset about champagne, you could have just went over and said, I was going to do this for you, Peter, but I know things happen. Let's go and kick it. Let's go have some fun. I'm going to surprise you later with something better and been mature about it. Yeah. But she acted like a little girl yep. and she's older too. Yeah. But it's like it just shows the lack of personal development yeah. of these poor girls who they cast <laughs> to be embarrassed on I television know. and people don't care. Well, and this is the crazy thing about The Bachelor is there are a ton of producers who are on the show and each producer 
they get to choose a couple contestants that are like theirs that they work with. And so the producers build this relationship with contestants to be like, listen, you can trust me. I'm here for you. And in turn, these producers can get them to cry. They can get the juice out. They'll say, hey, go over to that girl. You need to be the one to step up like you're the boss in the situation. And then the girl, whoever the contestant is, will go do that. But it's backfired. So it's good television because you got to realize the producers are trying to write a show and get the best drama and juice possible. So it's all a little bit messed up, but it's such great television. And I think all the girls going on know A, they're going to get exposure. Yeah. Which leans into like someone like McKenna, the fashion blogger. You mentioned this, like she's 22. Is she really looking to get married tomorrow or is she looking to build her audience? Which, you know, the show does. Well, we were sleuths because I, I, yet again, I, as much as I try to just use this as an unplug, I love learning about behind the scenes of it. And she's a fashion blogger. So as soon as you're a blogger and because you blog and because we create content, we understand the grind Mm -hmm. of this slow build in audience where if you were to get on, not the, we're together, but a show like The Bachelor, what took us three years to build would double in three days. Uh And so if you're a fashion blogger, it's just, if she was a fashion blogger who was maybe a little older, but it's like at 22, you're a fashion blogger, you understand what this show will do for you. And the longer you stay there, the bigger your numbers. And if you're lucky enough to come in fifth, fourth, third, or second, you might even be the bachelorette, which that fashion blog will then shoot to the top of the charts. And and that makes sense. Yeah. And you may, hey, this guy is attractive. He's cool. And, but you know, what, who knows people's motives and that will come up, Mm -hmm. but it's just hard to, to think that someone who's 22, I don't know if she lives in LA or some big city or what she's doing. But, I mean, are people looking... But we looked up their numbers. To... She and um, Hannah Oh, they Ann. shot straight up. Yeah, because Hannah Ann's a model, and I think she's had followers for a while. McKenna, I think, started around like 40 or 50K, but they're only going to keep going up. And well, good for them. I mean, It's get only yours. getting better because yeah. the more people are chasing the, the influencing route, too, mm-hmm. is bringing people wanting to be on The Bachelor because The Bachelor is creating like so much success in the in careers for these yeah chicks. it's crazy so it's more than just finding love like this probably was in 2008 yeah or whenever it started Interesting. you know you were fighting for a man who i think remember we talked about this before mm-hmm. who i think they only they all had millionaires because it created so. that same it's attraction of like if i win this not only do i fall in love but there's this like my life changes yeah. lifestyle and status yeah. wise man it's evolved in the fact that it is still on the air what is it season 24 they do just one they don't do just one a year right i think it's two i think they do one bachelorette and one bachelor every year yeah they i think so 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 they've been doing it for probably 12 years man which is going to be great but yeah I'm, i'm pumped i mean i still think i'm still going strong with madison as my pick i know they didn't Ooh, the sleeper the sleeper lexi lexi the red convertible girl yes I think um, she's gonna come through. A yeah, bit I think later. they didn't show her much in the first, but she could. She's my like my wild card sleeper, huh. like that isn't expected. I just, but there's. I think she's really cool. There's yeah. something about her. Good I think Natasha vibe. is gonna go really far with her. Um, just love her maturity and her that. attitude. I think is really attractive. So I'm curious um, how I think she, I think Natasha will be there. Mm-hmm. Hannah Ann. Yeah, Madison. Hannah Ann from the first episode, I was like, he's going to love her. Like, I just felt it. And she kind of not redeemed herself this episode, but the way they edited it last time. She, she kept cutting in. Yeah. Granted, it's editing. What are you going to do about that? Um, but I do think that even from like the preview they showed last night, at the very, very end, I think Hannah Brown is going to come back. And I think she's going to say, please don't do this, Pete. I'm in love with you. I want to be with you. And I think that's why he was having the freak out on the bed. And he laid down and he was crying and he didn't. I think, I think it's too easy now. Is it too it's easy? too easy. If that's it, it just seems too easy. But we don't we'll ha- we don't see how it gets there. We'll see. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think. Um, but what a train wreck for him if that is how it is. Because he's going to have all these women he's been spending the past month with every single day. Falling in love, breaking hearts. And then, like, this one woman that he was so madly invested in is going to come back and just, who yeah. knows? Who knows? It's it's really hard to make predictions at this point because, like, remember even that girl he met in the hotel who he went on the plane mm. with? 
was zero featured in this Jenny? episode. I don't Kelly? remember her name, but so we'll see. But I, I like just moving the cards around and trying to yeah, like guess. It's like really fun. fun. But um, but it was a it was a great episode, and uh, I I just enjoy it. We were having our it's popcorn and just watching it in bed. Just laugh. And, so thank you, Bachelor <laughs> thank Nation, you for Bachelor producing Nation. an entertaining uh, thing. And so we'll be back on that, um, you know, next Monday. I look forward to yes. it. It's something to look forward to on Mondays yeah. and, and really enjoy that. But um, uh, but it's that time. Let's uh, let's wrap this up wrap and up. Um, and go do our little park walk. I have to go to physical therapy in 30 minutes. Oh, well, then I'll be doing it solo. Oh, have fun, babe. Yeah, I will. Uh, But thanks for stopping by, everybody, and uh, we will see you next time. See you next time.